Greetings programs. Uh, welcome to Stechosaurus Studios. Uh, my name is Mike. Um, this is the shop uh, where I make things. Um, I make things and I try to keep my fingers attached to my hands at the same time, usually successfully. Um, today it's more pit droid madness. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage. So in the last episode, I introduced the uh, the pit droid project that I've been working on. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about something that I call the control manifesto. Uh, it sounds way cooler when you say it, control manifesto. So that's why I say it that way. Now, when I begin a project, um, I do a lot of uh, sort of brainstorming on whiteboards and pieces of paper and uh, lists and documents and all kinds of things. Um, it's a way to get the stuff out of your head and onto paper so that you don't forget it. Um, because let's be honest, um, I forgot what I told my wife five minutes ago, uh, let alone what, uh, I've, what things I have going on uh, on a project. Hey, it's me. So the control manifesto, it was just a quick document that I threw together in Word that would help define uh, what I wanted dummy one to be able to do. I used a bulleted list, but any tool in any format will do. So what do I want Dummy 1 to do? So remember in the last episode, I talked about maximizing the interactiveness. Uh, I want him to not only move his heads up and down and side to side, um, but I want him to wave. I want him to be able to raise his arm and then wave like this, and then also wave like that. Um, so got a lot of uh, work to do getting all those um, animatics uh, together. Um, I want the bike to play music. Um, and once the music is playing, I want Dummy to um, nod his head to the music um, like a headbanger. I mean, he's made of metal after all, right? So, so got to be a headbanger. Now, Dummy won't be riding a real in-universe speeder bike, um, so his bike will be riding on wheels, wheels, um, and not riding on a cushion of air. Although, if you know how to ride, uh, do that, uh, the cushion of air thing, let me know in the comments, because I'd like to do that. Yeah. Um, although he's not riding on a cushion of air, I would still like the bike to appear to bank in the corners. Um, so I've got a, uh, a, a thing that I'm going to try with that. Um, hopefully that'll work and we'll get to that uh, in, later in, I think, in this episode uh, and also in future episodes. Uh, and one last thing I want the, the speeder bike to do is be able to drift through the corners. You don't know what drifting is? Well, it's where you half turn, half slide through a corner with all the wheels spinning. And you make that rrr, 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 sound. Well, at least you did when you were a kid. So, um, yeah. So with the control manifesto written, um, I got into the design. Now, this is what I think. The design of the drive dictates what the frame is going to look like. And the design of the frame dictates what the body is going to look like. So it made sense to me to start with the drive system first and then work my way sort of out from there. Um, now there's a, a person in the, the R2 Builders Club, is, uh, goes by the name of Max Stang on the club. Um, his real name is Malcolm. Uh, he's a friend of mine uh, and he happens to be in the local group. Um, Malcolm came up with a drive he calls the Max Drive that fits into a very compact space. So I'm basing my drive system on the Max Drive. So I call these drive cassettes. Malcolm drew them up in Fusion 360 and then had the pieces cut at an internet machine shop. Uh, and then he did the assembly and uh, all of the testing and everything. After a whole lot of staring off into space and many different horrible looking sketches, um, I put together this drawing again in Procreate as a first step. Uh, this drawing represents a number of design decisions, which I'll go over in a minute. Actually, I'll go over those changes right now. We're gonna do it right now, right now. Now, I wanted a fairly large wheel that could uh, handle the abuse that Dummy is gonna put out. He's a pretty bad driver. Um, so I went with a pretty large wheel. This is a Colson wheel. Um, this is the wheel that I chose. 
Um, and uh, the other thing is the, in my design, the current design, when it banks, the wheel will actually do a, a little bit of deflection. It will actually uh, tilt a little bit. And so I wanted a wheel that had a rounded top, not flat. Um, and so this was the wheel I chose. Um, I'll link all the, the uh, uh, in the description, I'll link all the different parts and everything that I'm gonna be talking about here. A second reason I chose Colson is uh, a company called Vex Robotics makes hubs that fit with Colson wheels. Um, this is called a dead hub. It was made to insert into the Colson wheel. Now, unfortunately, Vex, uh, from what I can tell, they have discontinued the dead hub. Um, they still have something called a live hub, which would work differently, but hopefully you can, uh, you can smell what I'm cooking here. Okay, you start by prying, well, actually, you start by pushing just this, uh, this center thing out. Um, and then you need, to, um, you need to pry this plastic piece out. Um, and then once you can, once you get that, you can slide the bearings out. Um, and then you, inside here, um, there's this little metal insert, which I'm not going to take it out of this one, um, but you'll need to take that out. And then once that is removed, uh, um, take out both of these, um, you can press in this aluminum, black aluminum piece, which is, which is the dead hub. Um, you'll need an arbor press in order to press that in place. Um, so you press that in, and then once that's in, put in place, um, you can put in this uh, radial bearing. Now this is a 3 8 inch ID, 7 8 inch OD. Um, radial bearing. Um, they'll accommodate a three-quarter inch, or excuse me, a three-eighths inch ID or OD uh, diameter axle. So you, basically I'm just going to use a, a three-eighths inch uh, bolt, through bolt, that'll bolt it into the cassette um, and then the, the bearing will ride on that. Um, and there's a second bearing on the other side. It doesn't, uh, this dead hub doesn't go all the way through. It's actually made to accommodate two different wheels, um, but it's um, uh, it will work just great for this. So um, once then you've got the the dead hub in place, you can get from Colson or from Vex this what they call a Versa hub. And it's got these little nubs on it, which mate up to the holes on the dead hub, and you can press it in place. And then you can get. Also from Vex, um, you can get this little, this is a 32 uh, tooth gear. Um, and again, it fits over these nubs. And then from there, you can screw this in place. And I'll put the rest of the screws in off camera, but um, now you've got a wheel with a gear on it um, that can be, this can now be a drive wheel. Malcolm pioneered the, uh, the use of these. This is a Neo motor. Um, he's got this on his R2 unit. Um, it is a brushless motor. Um, and it's, uh, so a lot of the guys on the R2, uh, uh, in the R2 Builders Club, they actually use a motor called the Q85, um, then with a Robotech controller. Um, the Neo motors use um, this little SparkMax controller, uh, and it turns out the Neo and SparkMax combination is quite a bit cheaper than um, the Q85 Robotech uh, way, and so I tr uh, decided I'm going to try to do that with Dummy. Um, I actually have the Q85s on my uh, on my R2 and they're great, but we're gonna try this out to see how this works. If you haven't figured it out, Malcolm is kind of on the design team. Um, yeah, and then uh, I've added, a, I will add eventually another guy, Neil, to help me out with the programming. It takes a village to raise a child, or in this case, build a droid. So for the motor, you will need to add a gear. Um, so the, the motor shaft has a little slot in it that's called the keyway. Um, and then they sell these little, um, oh, by the way, this are, uh, get the Neo motors and all these parts from Rev Robotics. So there's two different companies. There's Vex and Rev. 
um, that I buy uh, these robotic stuffs from. So this little gear I had to, it doesn't come with a hole in it, so I had to drill a hole and tap it for a set screw. Um, and then you put the key in and you slide the, um, the gear over the top and with the new hole uh, that's there, that uh, goes down against the key and holds that gear in place. Um, so we've got uh, a wheel with a gear and we've got a motor with a gear um, and you need to connect the two together to drive them. Um, you can get, uh, this is number 25 chain. Um, you can buy this uh, from Vex or from Rev. Um, I can't remember who I bought this from. Um, so I actually need to get to getting on uh, making some circles of uh, chain uh, and then I can connect these and then I can finalize my cassette design and then I can get into Fusion and do all of the cassette design. So one last thing on the drive design. Um, here's the, this is, is the sketch again. The cassettes are attached to the bike frame. Uh, but you'll note that on the right hand side there I've written linear actuator. Uh, my intent is when cornering the actuator on the outside wheel will extend thus raising the frame and giving the appearance of banking through the corner so that's how we're going to do it we're not we can't actually bank because we don't ride on a cushion of air we're going to make it look like it's banking by raising one side of it up um, now i don't know if that'll work but that's the plan stick to the plan um, I have yet to identify and purchase the linear actuators. Uh, that's one of probably 48,357, or maybe it's 358, I don't know, tasks that are still remaining on this project. So the last thing for this episode is a revisit of the 3D printed uh, droid. Now Dave, uh, Dave Moog from Droid Division was kind enough to provide me with a step file for the left arm, um, which I can import into Fusion and then do some, some redesign on it. Um, so got the pieces here. So this is, this is the, sh the upper arm and this is the lower arm. So this is the current um, elbow right here. Um, and what I need to do is somehow put some bearings in here so that it's not rotating plastic on plastic. Um, really want to uh, put in a bearing so that because plastic on plastic will um, not wear very well. So I want to uh, try to um, eliminate that or fix that. Um, and then also somewhere I need to put the solenoids or stepper motors or whatever I'm going to use to operate. And which means hollowing this piece out um, or coming up with some other methods of uh, of m moving the arm. I'm still in the process of working on that. Um, and then last is the hand. So his fingers move like this. Um, this goes, uh, I haven't sanded it yet, so I can't actually get it all the way in there, but it goes into the, f the uh, forearm like that. Um, with this current design, if, you know, I, I want would like him to wave like this. So I could wave his fingers, but I can't wave the whole hand without redesigning this. So need to, I will try to put in a joint here. No, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. Right. Okay. That's it for this episode. Um, thanks for uh, tuning in. I hope you'll come back for episode three. Um, keep on building cool things out there. Somebody needs to do it. Roll that beautiful bean. Blah, 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 blah. We'll try that one more time. Okay. Oh, what the heck am I saying?